Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova's Bear Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be building ourselves a Pi hosted case from 52 Pi. So as you can see on the thumbnail, that's how it looks like. So let's begin. So it went from one unboxing to two unboxings from the same company, 52Pi or Geek Pi, as you can say. Now I'm gonna leave all the links down in the description below for the products itself, but yeah, this is gonna be an eight gigabyte kit that's gonna be going into our server case or the NAS case as they call it. And this will now be the new home of the Pi hosted server. So we're gonna be putting this together to see how everything looks. And I will be doing some tweaks to it later on in the future to make the screen display the stuff that I want to display like Docker information. But for now we have two unboxings that we're gonna go through. And let's begin with uh, this one right over here which is the eight gigabyte version of Geek's Pi's kit and what we get from the actual kit itself. So you know like other companies come out with kits like uh, Canon Kit has a Raspberry Pi kit and they have like certain amount of stuff in there. That's basically what we're gonna go through. So in this kit itself, uh, this was sent to me as a Christmas gift from 52Pi. So um, I actually don't know how much this is and I know they do have this kit available, but yeah, this was a Christmas gift because I do a lot of stuff with 52Pi. So that's what they sent me. This is the first time I'm opening it and look at that that's a that's a note from 52 pi and it's handwritten it's not printed or anything so that's a christmas note i want to thank you them for being support on this channel and always sending me stuff that i need the heatsink that i'm using on the car pewter is also uh, from 52 pi so a lot of times when i need something i can just reach out to somebody over there and they'll be able to help me so first up we have the power supply uh, this is a 5 volt and 3 amps uh, power supply with a little switch which allows you to turn it on and off. It's a USB-C obviously for the Raspberry Pi 4. Comes with a HDMI cable, uh, micro to a regular HDMI. Uh, oh cool. It also comes with the enclosure. This is the enclosure that you would get from the kit. I don't know what color this one would be. Uh, does it say? Black. So it's the black enclosure from 52 pi um this also comes with removable tabs and a fan it actually has a fan let's open this up if i could so i'm opening let's see this is the black case this is how it looks all right let me put that away so this oh this actually looks pretty cool this is the case. It has some, uh, what do you call it? Mounting holes on the bottom. So you could actually mount it to something. Uh, the case, does this pop open? Yep, pops open on top. Comes with a few heat sinks. Also comes with a fan, 40 millimeter fan with screws and some wires. Oh, it's actually three pins. So it's PWM, it's a PWM fan. And the case itself. Does this come apart? It has to. Right? Yeah, the bottom comes apart so you can fit the Raspberry Pi on the bottom. Now, I'm not going to be using this case because we got that other uh, Raspberry Pi NAS case, but it's really cool that they have this case. I might use this case for something else. Like, I do have a 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi that I could use this on, or another 2 gigabyte Raspberry Pi that I could use this on. But So, for now, I'm just going to pack this back up, put this back together, and use this case for another project I might have down the road because I. I I never have enough cases for the amount of Raspberry Pis I have. I'm not even going to put that in. Slide this back in. And last but not least, actually, there's more stuff in here. Um, card reader. Also comes with um, 64 gigabyte. Wow, 64 gigabyte um, SD card. And then the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi. So let's pop this open and let's see. This is, I think, the newer version. Yep, it's got the smiley face on the bottom. I don't know if you could see that. So there's a smiley face like right over here, the three circuits. Let me see if I can get you a closer look right over here. Yeah, so right over here, there are three circuit boards right here. It looks like a little smiley face right over here. That's how you know it's the new board. 
which means this one, if I use the new operating system, it will go up to 1.8 gigahertz. So also the, I think all eight gigabytes have that little smiley face thing. I call it a smiley face thing, but it's just their circuitry. So now that we unraveled the eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi, let me get that out of the way. Here is for the core of what we're gonna be doing. So this is what they call the NAS kit. And like I said, you probably see it on the thumbnail. It looks pretty cool. Again, everything I will leave in the description of this video, but that's how this looks. That's the picture of it. We also have the tower case. You've probably seen this in my videos because I actually use this tower case a lot from my other Raspberry Pi. So this is another tower case. Uh, you get the USB to USB for this thing, which is a NVMe daughter board for the Raspberry Pi. Let me see if I can take this out. So it's just the NVMe daughter board and you just plug it in through the USB, hook it up into a tower. And that's why they call it a NAS because you got the M.2 over here. Now I would have preferred if it was SSD instead, but NVMe works just as well. It's less power too. Um, we also got a power brick and this one is uh, five volts, two amps, and it also could switch to 12 volts, 1.5 amps. So it's uh, it's got two different uh, voltages on there. I got a pretty nice, this is actually a pretty nice USB-C cable. What else? Um, mounting screws, probably for the entire kit. I don't know if it comes with some. A screwdriver hex hexagon thing, a socket. A Phillips head screwdriver and a lot of uh, packing material. So that is done. We are gonna open up the tower case. You probably, you guys have seen this so many times. And I'll leave a link to where you can just buy this individually. This tower kit is actually pretty impressive. It's really nice. So this is how that looks like. So it's like a tower case. It looks really cool. I use it for all my Raspberry Pi builds just because it comes with a bracket to mount it onto the Raspberry Pi. And another fan. So since this came with the ice tower, I guess you could either swap these two fans. So you don't need that. If you don't want the LEDs, you could use a black fan instead and more mounting screws and heat sink. Thermal paste or thermal, thermal, uh, thermal tape. Okay, that is all done. Let's check out what's in this case. Uh, the instruction manual, the actual case itself. Is there anything else on here? Nope. And this case is actually 3D printed. So the whole outside of this is actually 3D printed. So here's the acrylic for one panel. Here's the acrylic for the second panel. Got some adhesives. Um, these are more mounting screws, uh, USB, micro USB to USB-C. So I guess if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 3 with this case, you could just use this adapter and swap that over. Um, a 90 degree angle GPIO. This way you could still have the GPIO stick out from the sides. And screens, two screens to be exact, even though it only really needs to use one because there's only one spot for one. It actually comes with two screens and then a bunch of um, GPIO cables. So you can have different options. You have male to female or female to female. So it depends on how you wanna hook it up to this pin, you have your choices over there. And that is it. The whole installation process, I don't think is that crazy. So the installation process would probably be the daughter board on bottom, which is the M.2 NVMe, and then the Raspberry Pi and then the heatsink. And that's about it. So I'm gonna put this together and see how it looks. Now, I'm not gonna install the NVMe. I'll install that a little bit later. I do have some, but I'll just install that later and we'll see how it looks. So this is how the case looks like. Looks pretty cool. It's got the screen on top, 3D printed. It's got holes on bottom. And this acrylic case makes it actually stand up from the ground. So. It's, it's actually got breathing room from the bottom. All right, first off, M.2, okay. 
that's where that would go in. Um, I do need some risers. So let's dump this out. So I'm just dumping a bunch of screws out and get these risers in. Okay, so I got the four risers in, slap in the Raspberry Pi. And I gotta make sure that these are the correct risers. They seem to be. Nothing seems to be touching. I just don't want to short. And I gotta make sure that since I'm placing these two together, it has enough room for um, this thing right over here. So let's pop that together and see how that works. I'm not screwing anything yet because I still got to put the massive heat sink on there. So I'm just going to take this out, make sure these two go into place. Oh, they do. Perfect. So next up we have the heat sink. So this heat sink will go on top in front like this. So I need the bracket and the risers. So these are four risers that will go in this way. So now, if you don't want to screw this in with your finger, they give you this tool, which is a hex tool, and that seems to fit in there perfectly. Now that I buttoned up everything, I did a little bit off camera just because it's a little annoying to do. Uh, I am going to be installing this 90 degree angle GPIO thing onto the side of this guy because that's what it's meant for. So I'm going to slap this right here on the side. I don't know if you guys could see it, but it's slapped right over here. My completed version of the case. That's how it looks like. Now, this is done. I got to rip off the stuff for the acrylic. And because it came with an extra fan, I might as well just use it. Is that right? Should I just use it? Oh, satisfying. Now I got to rip off this side. Oh, look at that. Clear. This has a really cool hexagon pattern as well with the 52 Pi logo on top. There we go. And now we could just install these onto the side, right? No, actually, you know what? I got to do the screen. I'm going to take one of the screens. This is the time where you actually need the instructions because they'll tell you which uh, pins to look up. And also, if you want to get this screen set up to like just to read the CPU information, memory usage and stuff like that, they do have a script that you could install from their website and it would have all the information you need. So first, all right. So fortunately, I do have a handful of short GPIO cables that I could be using. So I want to be using this too for the screen because we don't need to wrap that much, but I only have three. I couldn't find my fourth one, which I will eventually dig up. But for now, I'm just going to use one long one for the ground or something like that. And all the short ones for everything else until I get a chance to replace it. This way I don't have too many wires running. Yes, even this little guy needs some sort of cable management. So first thing I'm going to do is actually peel off this screen and it does come with the adhesives, these, these little things. You stick the screen onto this guy. Um, I am gonna run the wires now for power and data, and then a semi-long one for the ground. Then stick this stuff on there. It's got a little bit of a gap when you put it in, but should be okay. Actually, I have the screen upside down. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I have all the wires plugged in for the screen and for the fan. Now we can finish putting this together. I'm going to leave this fan off and not install a fan on here yet. Uh, I don't think it really needs it, but if I ever decide to add a secondary fan, I would because maybe the M.2 might get too hot or something and it needs an extra draw. But for now, I'm just going to leave it open. Even though it does have an extra fan, I do have an extra fan, I mean. 
So now I'm just gonna close it up with the screws that they gave me. There's really no instructions as to what screw to use. I'm just going by what fits. So this doesn't fit, so I'm not gonna use that, see? That's how it looks on one side. Now, if you don't like this protruding out, you could always just remove it and not use their GPIO extender, but I'm using it because I can always plug stuff in without having to take apart the case just to test out stuff, so I'm leaving it in. But you could always take it out to, for a very flush look. All right, and there we have it, guys. This is the completed case. It's got room in the back so you can uh, reach the SD card. And also, you, if you wanted to, you could stick the camera module in the back as well. It leaves that gap open. You got the GPIOs now, front panel display, uh, all access to the ports. Even on the side, you have access to the ports. So yeah, you have access to everything on this case and it looks really good. Slap on this power cord and see how it looks when it powers on with the fan. Whoa, this one is a red fan. Nope, RGB. I have no SD card plugged in, so it's not gonna power on the display or anything. I just want to see how it looks like with the fan on. That's pretty impressive. And this fan, compared to the old model that I have, is much more quieter. The other one is like so loud, but this one is quiet. I could barely hear it. I do feel some um, fan over here on the other side coming out. So it seems to be okay without having to use an actual fan. But that is it, guys. This case came out so impressive. I actually really like it. Like I said, this will actually be the case for my Pi Hosted series because it actually looks like a server case. It supports M.2, so it has storage that I need. And it, it could I could put it anywhere I want. And it has multiple options for cooling the entire thing. I have the heatsink going on. Everything is working out. And I could actually sit it over here on the shelf. So that is it anyway if you guys like this video please hit that like button if you guys have any questions about this hit me down in the comments below like i said the screen will be reactivated once i get the code for reading docker information and i'll be uploading that video once that's ready if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts